In this video, we'll be looking at some weird looking trees that can be found in Poland. Actually, we'll be looking at the cell theory, what it is, and all of its exceptions that you need to know about. But first, when I, when I was in um, doing high school and learning about cells, I always initially was a bit confused because I thought cells looked like this. So they looked like this, they were small, um, um, flat, like two-dimensional like structures and you can see um, inside them these uh, all these organelles and nucleus and all these kind of things but this didn't make this didn't really make sense to me because I was like wouldn't all these organelles just come out if this if a cell was open like this and yeah that's true it would so I, clearly I was not understanding something right so what I'm trying to say is that for those who don't know maybe you already know but for those who don't know a cell is 3d it's spherical in shape. So don't think that this is exactly, it's a flat thing that's open and has things inside like this. This is how they show it. So it makes sense. But in reality, a cell looks like this. It's 3D spherical shape. So in this case, we can see there's a cell membrane surrounding. So this, this is the cell membrane, which is, it, which is the equivalent to this blue line in this picture I'm showing here. And that's why we can't see inside well, that's why we can't see the organelles right now because it's being surrounded by a cell membrane. But as soon as we remove that cell membrane, what will we see? We will see the cytoplasm, the jelly-like cytoplasm, and all the organelles. So let's see how that looks like. See right now, cell membrane is gone, and we can see all the organelles, the nucleus, mitochondria, rough ER, everything, including this jelly-like substance, the cytoplasm. So why do they show the cell like this? So when we see a picture like this, what we're really seeing is this. Essentially, we're seeing a view of a cell that was cut open. And now, after it's been cut open, we're looking from the top down into the cell, right? So that's what we're seeing. And th they do this because in reality, you can't see the organelles of a real cell like this. You need to open it up. So when we see this picture, we are seeing a sliced top view of a cell to be able to see everything inside it because this is the most clear view, right? So if you didn't get this, I hope this makes sense now. Anyways, let's go on to the cell theory. So there are three theories regarding cells that you need to know about. Three things that are believed to be true and you need to remember them. So let's, let's look at what they are. So first of all, Number one is that all living organisms are made up of one or more cells. So apparently that's one theory of what cells are. Cells make up all living things. Okay, so the key word here is living because your desk or the floor or your bed, all of those, are they made up of cells? No, because they are non-living things. They are made up of carbon, wood, all other things that are non-living. So the key is, it is believed that one's theory of cells is that they make up all living things. So by that logic, if you look closely at yourself with a microscope, since you are living, you should be able to see that you are made of cells. And that's true. Okay? And there are even some organisms that are only made up of one cell. We, us humans and animals, we're multicellular. Cellular. We are made up of billions of cells. But there are even some organisms that are only made up of one cell, and they are called unicellular organisms. But all living things are made up of one or more cells, okay? So that's the first, um, uh, that's one example of, uh, wait, that's one uh, cell theory that you need to know about. So the second one here is cells are the smallest unit of life. What this means is, um, Cells are the smallest thing considered living. That's what it means. So, for example, let's take a look at the cell. This is the smallest living thing. So, for example, then, by that logic, that means if I look at the membrane by itself, is that considered living? No. Okay, so why is this whole cell considered living? But if I just take a look at its membrane, that is not living. Why? Well, how can we define what is living and what's not living? So apparently, to be living, you need to fulfill all the functions of life. 
there are seven functions of life. They include stuff like um, excretion, nutrition, growth, um, a me a rep reproduction. So there are seven of them total, okay? In this video, I'm not talking about those. But just know, to be considered living, you need to fulfill the seven functions of life. And we know a cell is the smallest thing that can do those seven functions of life. The membrane cannot do the seven functions of life, but these, the, the cell all together with all of its organelles and membrane and cytoplasm, that is the smallest thing that can do all the functions of life. Okay, so hence cells are the smallest units of life. Now the last one, the last cell theory is that all cells come from pre-existing cells. Now this one makes sense because where is this cell from? Well, this cell is like a um, is a is a kid, okay? So where do all kids come from? Their parents, right? So the same way that we come from our parents, cells come from their parents. They come cells come from their pre other pre existing cells. So their parents, right? Now you can make this complicated and be like, okay, where did the first um, where did the where did the very first cell come from? Well, of course, that's a complicated question. No one knows that. So don't be a smart ass and don't think that far back. Just know that all cells come from pre-existing cells. Don't go back to the first cell and be like, where's that from? Okay, so you need to remember these three theories really well, word by word almost, because they come in in multiple choice questions and um, they, they are very easily asked. Very important. Just know that. So remember I said, this is just a key thing for you to remember. I'll make another video on the functions of life. If all cells are considered the smallest units of life, then what are the functions of life? This is what I just mentioned. There are seven functions of life. Cells are the smallest thing that can do those seven functions of life. And hence, cells are the smallest unit of life. Now, now that we know what the cell theory is, um, it's also important to know what normal cells look like. Normal cells look like this one right here. It's got a nucleus, it's got some organelles, it's very small, you need a microscope to see them. Um, so, based on all this, what are some exceptions to what cells are? Like, what are examples of cells that don't really fit these theories well? That, 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 that don't really fit the ordinary, normal cell? So let's look at them. There are four ones you need to know about. Four exceptions to cell theory. Okay, so let's start off with... Um, uh, red blood cells. You need to know all these as well. Like you need to remember these. They're also really important, just like the cell theories. So red blood cells are an exception. Why do you think so? So based on knowing what a normal cell looks like and what a red blood cell looks like, what's different? Okay, hopefully um, you know that a red blood cell, what makes it different from a normal cell is the fact that it does not have a nucleus. It is without nucleus. You can see it's just a cell, no nucleus. Okay, and we know normal cells have nucleuses. So it's got no nuclei, none. Maybe you said, okay, the shape looks weird to me. It's like flat. But shape is typically not a reason to be an exception because you have so many different types of cells in your body and they all look slightly different that there is no real normal cell. Like when I show this image, this is just um, an, an ideal cell, but all of the cells in your body, all the types, your neurons, like your brain cells, your muscle cells, your skin cells, all of those cells have different shapes, including your blood cell has a different shape. So shapes is normally not a reason to make an exception. It's normally things like nucleus and size. So in this case, it's got no nucleus, hence it's an exception. Let's look at another one. Um, let's look at this one first, giant algae. So I just mentioned that having no nucleus makes this one an exception. Now what makes this one an exception? It's got a nucleus, this black dot here. So why is it an exception? The reason why giant algae is an exception to a normal cell is that it is giant, hence its name. A normal um, cell is like 10 micrometers, really, really tiny. This cell is 10 centimeters. It's humongous. You can clearly see it. It's 10 centimeters big. Okay, so... The reason why this is an exception, it's very large. Again, not due to this weird shape. All cells have different shapes. It's due to the size. All right, so uh, let's go to skeletal muscle. This is another tricky one. Why is skeletal muscle 
considered a cell exception. First of all, what is muscle and what is a skeletal muscle? So we have three types of um, uh, muscle cells in our body. We've got skeletal muscle. Uh, we can remember this being what this is because skeletal muscle is any kind of muscle on your skeleton. Okay, skeletal muscle. So for example, where is your skeleton? Does your arm have a bone in it? Yes, that's a skeleton, right? Um, your biceps, so this muscle here, is on your bone, right? And your triceps is on your bone as well. These are all examples of skeletal muscles. Another way to remember what a skeletal muscle is, is any muscle you can control. You can move your legs, your arms, your head. Why? Because all those movements are done by skeletal muscle, muscle that you can control, okay? Uh, and by the way, this is how the muscle looks like, the muscle cells look like of a skeletal muscle. You can see they're long tubes with many nuclei on each cell. Now, another kind of muscle is your um, smooth muscle. They are. This is the muscle contained in your organs. How is this kind of muscle different from your skeletal muscle? So the, the difference is that smooth muscle you cannot control, right? Imagine you are able to control your digestive system. Imagine you are able to control the movement of your food through your intestines. That would take a lot of energy and time to think about the whole time, right? Like, thank goodness we don't have to do that. Um, so a difference in the structure of the cells would be that the smooth muscle, each, new, each cell has one nucleus, you can see. So there's many little cells, each with one nucleus, whereas the skeletal muscle has really large, long cells with many nuclei each. Uh, and the last one we want to look at is our heart, our heart muscle. This is our final type of muscle. And you can see they branch. So it's like a weird type of cell. The shape branches off like this. Uh, but still, each heart cell has one nucleus. You can see this is one heart cell. It's got a nucleus. Then it branches off into other cells. And this cell has got one nucleus. This cell's got one nucleus. Okay, so they all have one nucleus. So which one of these is the exception? Based on these, we know that our smooth muscle is the exception. I mean, our skeletal muscle is the exception because for two reasons. One, they are very large. And two, they don't have no nuclei. They rather have too many nuclei. They have more than one nucleus per cell, which is an exception because the normal cells only have one nucleus. So unlike red blood cells that have no nuclei, our skeletal muscle has too many nuclei. So too many nuclei composed of muscle fibers much larger than a single cell. So size and nucleus. Always think of these two when you think of exceptions to cell theory. Now, last one we need to know about is fungi. Fungi, uh, a common word for fungi is mushroom. So fungi is like the science name. Mushrooms, interestingly, if you look at this structure and we open up the mushroom and we see the inside, they're made up of these long thread-like things. Initially, you would think, oh, all of these thread-like things, if we zoom in closer, are probably made up of more cells. Just like if you look at your arm, you look closely, it's made up of many cells. Actually, each of these thread-like things is one cell. So the reason why the fungi is an exception is because it is made up of one cell or a bunch of cells that are humongous, very large, like this. And each of these cells have many nuclei. So look at this cell. You can imagine, if we look into here, we will see a structure kind of like this, a branching cell with many nuclei. So fungi is an exception, just like skeletal muscle in the fact that it has many nuclei, and it's pretty large, and it branches off a lot. This is not typical of a normal cell. So, yeah, I made a mistake here. So many nuclei and large, relatively large. Okay, so I hope all of these exceptions to cell theory make sense. Um, and I will talk about, as I said, the functions of life, which is important in a future video.